Welcome to the New Calculus Channel. My name is John Gabriel. This episode or this YouTube video is a special on academic ignorance and stupidity. And the academic I'll be focusing on in this uh, particular YouTube is called Gilbert Strang. You're looking at it in front of you. Uh, this academic who looks very much like a howler monkey to me uh, is actually giving a lecture for MIT uh, using the open courseware and he's talking about derivatives. At that particular point in the video one minute and 58 seconds, he's telling his audience that if uh, a device were on a plane, it would tell one the speed at all times. Well, you know, this academic is, is a particular kind of idiot. Um, he's been annoying me tremendously over the past year on the news group called uh, Psydot Math and he was using an alias of port 563. I'd like to just uh, show you a comment that I placed on here which I doubt will last very long unless of course MIT leaves it on. But here's, uh, here's what I said in my comment. I said no recorder tells you the speed at all times. There is no such thing as an instantaneous rate of change. In fact, the recording devices, devices do not use a function or mathematical model. They are part of what one calls causal systems. I doubt Strang even knows what those are. A position function is valid only if it represents a real-time scenario and it contains at least one time differential. One cannot even begin to talk about a rate of change unless there is a time differential. Moreover, it is never instantaneous because the slope of any tangent line to a given function hasn't changed <laughs> in the past, is not changing in the present, and will never change in the future. Just to give you an example of that. Let's go over here. Now, one of the most ridiculous concepts I've come across in so many textbooks is that concept which talks about how fast a function changes. That's absolute bullshit. Nothing changes. Look, any particular function has a tangent line if it is continuous and smooth. Nothing is changing there. Those tangent lines have been the same in past perpetuity, in the present, and in future perpetuity. Can you even begin to talk about how fast anything is changing here? Fast or slow has nothing to do with that tangent line over there. If you look at the equation of this particular curve, it doesn't even have a time differential. There's nothing about fast and slow there, okay? Now, you can move any of these pink points and you'll notice that this slope of the tangent line doesn't change. Uh, using Cauchy's flow derivative definition, <laughs> what happens is, is this. These points move closer together, supposedly being infinitesimal, until you get this junk, okay, which is impossible. But really, that's not what a derivative is all about. A derivative is the slope of a special kind of straight line. A straight line that is tangent to a nonlinear curve, as you're looking at in this example. Okay? So, regardless of what you do, the slope of a tangent line, in this case and in any other case, stays the same. Nothing is changing. Right. Let's go back to this particular slide here and look at the definition of instant. 
Well, Webster says an instant is a very short period of time. And then it has two definitions. I'm just going to look at the first one, which says an infinitesimal space of time, especially a point in time separating two states. So if you go back to this diagram here, it's a point separating two states. So what, what is this point separating? Can you, can you tell me what it's separating? What two states is it separating? Well, there are so many ridiculous concepts in mainstream mathematics that it's hard to even begin. Let's look at the definition of instantaneous. Happening very quickly. Happening in an instant. Alright, so it's got three uh, particular definitions here. Done, occurring, or acting without any perceptible duration of time. Done without any delay. And occurring or present at a particular instant such as in instantaneous velocity. Well, if you take a look at Strang's video, he, he basically, he actually says, oh dear, <laughs> got an error here, but he says at 158 that it tells you, the recording device tells you the speed at all times. But there is no recording device which does that, because in order for it to do that, it would have to be continuous and no analog or digital device gives you the exact speed at all times. Real-time data acquisition devices use finite differences to describe an average rate of change, never an instantaneous rate of change because there is no such thing. Did you get that? there is no such thing as instantaneous rate of change. Where did that expression come from? Well, it goes back all the way to Newton. If you look at the Encyclopedia Britannica entry on fluxion, what Newton meant by fluxion is derivative. And <laughs> it, <coughs> it was kind of interpreted as an instantaneous rate of change, but really there is no change occurring. The, there is no change in terms of the tangent line slope. There is no change in terms of the finite differences because all the finite differences are the same as I've shown you in another YouTube uh, video. For example, it doesn't matter where these points are located. dy and dx are finite differences not changes in X and Y. And this particular ratio, which is a third, doesn't change for this line. Okay? There is nothing changing. And then there is this episode, there is this uh, particular applet where, oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let me just undo that. In fact, uh, let me just do this. Make it nice and big again. Okay, so if we look at this here, uh, this applet was designed for professors of mathematics. As you can see, <coughs> uh, this is this is called Gabriel's triangle as a parody to Barrow's triangle because Barrow really didn't know what he was talking about. But this is what's happening when you move a parallel secant line so that it coincides with a tangent line then obviously this red tangent line gradient will be the same as the slope of this parallel secant line wanted and m and n <coughs> play no <coughs> play no role in the gradient of the tangent line in the new calculus there are no limits you're looking at the slope of the tangent line by calculating the slope of a parallel secant line. And of course all these triangles here are similar triangles as you can see. Okay, let's go back to uh, back to this description here. So really there is nothing instantaneously happening. There is no rate of change. In fact, we don't even talk about a rate of change 
unless one of the differentials unless one of the differentials is a time differential. So if we have uh, let's say dy dx and neither of these is a time differential we can't say anything about how fast or how slow because the function itself is not changing. Now in causal systems such as the speed of an airplane or a car or anything else we're not using calculus did you get that? Let me repeat. We're not using calculus. In fact, calculus is both null and void in causal systems. So, well, you might ask, well, how do we calculate speed? Well, speed is really, is really a distance over an elapsed time. Okay? A distance covered over a distance covered over an elapsed time. Both the numerator and the denominator are differentials. So the numerator here is the differential ds and the denominator the, differenti the differential dt. In this case we have a rate and only in this particular case can we talk about a rate, rate of change. But it's not instantaneous because no device is capable of measuring either of these differentials exactly at any given instance. In fact, when the speed is calculated, you're looking at something like this. If f is, let's say, uh, a position function, you're looking at f x uh, minus t, yes, minus f of x, where x is now. In fact, in causal systems, you don't even have a function. You just have an input from a device. So what you see here is really just the distance being recorded from some kind of device. So there is no calculus. Calculus only applies when you have a function that is both continuous, continuous, and smooth. Okay? Continuous and smooth. If a function is not both continuous and smooth, calculus does not apply. Okay? There is no application of calculus possible. That's it. So, let me go back to this uh, screen here. So, Newton was talking about the derivative as a fluxion and the primitive function or the integral as a fluent. If we come back to Strang's video here, we will see that it's impossible because in the calculation of speed, all of the following would have to happen in an instant. The finite difference between two points zero distance apart, which is clearly impossible because no two points are zero distance apart unless they are the same point. And this is the mainstream defini definition of the derivative. In other words, Cauchy's derivative where you have zero over zero as I showed you over here. This is what the mainstream definition is. Okay. It's this, this garbage, when you have that. Does that make sense? Obviously not. And then secondly, you need an exact determination of time t. That too is impossible. And you need a processor that, com that can compute the quotient in zero time. Because as you see again here, you'd need to have this quotient computed in zero time. These are just a few reasons, but there are many more. And so this video is a tribute to this very evil individual that you're looking at here in this photograph, this man, uh, who has been libeling me, uh, calling me a terrorist, harassing me, and saying very nasty things about math everywhere else this individual
I hope not get harmed. And, and if you're smart enough, you'll realize that what I'm telling you is true, and what this idiot is telling you in this video is really a whole lot of nonsense. Um, it's on um, and composed, but uh, at any rate, I've tried to explain to you that it makes no sense to even talk about how fast or slow and there is no such thing as an instantaneous rate of change. This is a new calculus channel. I'm John Gabriel.